The Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus might not look radically different from their predecessors, but that's because most of the improvements have been focused on making the cameras better. These are the first phones to feature a physically variable aperture, which in itself is a pretty cool piece of tech. Now, what better way to test these new cameras than with a good old-fashioned camera shootout? We'll be putting the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus against the Apple iPhone X and the Google Pixel 2 XL, two smartphones that have proven to have very good cameras. The main sensors on all three smartphones have 12 megapixel resolutions. They feature fast phase detection, autofocus, and optical image stabilization. All have equally wide apertures too for low light shooting. However, the Galaxy S9 Plus has the widest aperture here at f1.5 compared to the f1.8 on the other two. The Galaxy S9 Plus and the iPhone X are also the only two phones with a second camera, which lets you do an optical zoom and both have optical stabilization too. We've lined up a series of tests like before, so let's see how Samsung's latest flagship stacks up against a proven few. In our first daylight test, the Galaxy S9 Plus has the best picture with a pleasing white balance that's true to the scene at hand and very good detail in objects that are placed in the distance. The Pixel 2 XL has deeper blacks which gives the shadows more definition but this also causes a bit of crushing in the black levels. We love the tone of the sky in the picture shot by the iPhone X, however, the sensor isn't able to capture the best detail here which is noticeable once you zoom in a bit closer. Just take a look at a 100% crop of the little red shed from all three phones and you'll know what we mean. In our second test, the S9 Plus and the iPhone X manage slightly livelier colors as compared to the Pixel 2 XL. However, the Pixel is the only one that correctly exposes the sky in the background, but with this, there's noticeable chromatic aberration in the leaves of the trees. In our final HDR shot, the S9 Plus delivers the sharpest and the brightest picture of all three phones. With 100% crop, you can easily see the difference in detail in the parked vehicles. The various shades of black are easily visible in the S9, while the iPhone comes in at a close second. The darker areas tend to crush in the shot from the Pixel 2 XL, and there's a bit of visible noise in the picture too. In a close-up test, we looked at how the phones handle color, detail, and the smoothness of the background blur. In our first test, the S9 Plus does produce the best sharpness on the petals of the flower with well-defined edges. However, the color temperature is a bit too warm here. The iPhone X has the best white balance and as a result, the vibrancy in the colors make for a very captivating shot. The Pixel 2 XL manages good detail, but the brightness level is a bit on the lower side, which makes the image look a bit dull. In our second test, with less harsh sunlight and a light breeze, we check to see which phone has the lowest shutter lag. From multiple takes, we found the Galaxy S9 Plus to have the best hit ratio among the three, as most of the shots ended up being in focus. It also gets the white balance spot on this time, and the sharpness around the petals is the best. The Pixel 2 XL also manages a very sharp image here, but gets the colors terribly wrong, as the flowers end up with a smurf blue shade instead of a lighter one. The iPhone X gets the colors right, but zooming in reveals slight haziness around the edges of the petals that are in focus. Plus, the flowers on the left have a bit of motion blur. The Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and the Apple iPhone X both support secondary telephoto cameras with 12 megapixel resolution and apertures of f2.4. However, the camera app doesn't always switch to the second sensor and it all depends on the amount of light at hand and even then it's not a guarantee. For instance, in our first test, the iPhone X used the primary camera itself to get a zoomed in shot by simply adding a digital zoom even though there was plenty of light around. As a result, details are not the best when you do a tighter crop. The Galaxy S9 Plus on the other hand switched to the second sensor and managed much better colors and detail. In our second test, which was indoors but with good artificial lighting, both phones switched to the second sensor. Here, the Galaxy S9 Plus does manage slightly better details in the flowers. There is a bit of noise in some background elements and the color tone is veering towards the warmer side, which is not necessarily a bad thing in this case. The iPhone handles noise much better than the Samsung, and the color tone is also neutral. However, it doesn't capture a lot of detail, which is noticeable when you zoom in. In our last shot and with the light fading rapidly, it's the S9 that cheats a bit and sticks to the wider aperture of the main camera. 
This does give you a slightly brighter image as a result, but the details are quite poor. The iPhone 10, on the other hand, does a proper optical zoom in this scenario, thus giving you slightly better details. For this test, we shot the panoramas with the phones held vertically. This works pretty seamlessly on the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy S9 Plus, as you simply move in the desired direction while the photo is being stitched on the fly. The Pixel 2 XL's implementation is a bit clunky as you have to stop for a second at intervals and wait for the camera to capture the shot and then move along. The Galaxy S9 Plus offers the best color tone among the three here, with accurate stitching and good detail. The iPhone 10 comes in at a close second, also handling the exposure and detail well. The Pixel 2 XL's image looks a bit dull in comparison and doesn't really capture as much of the scene as the other two. All three phones feature a portrait mode which can result in some pretty neat effects when applied correctly. In our first test, we try it out on a human subject and under daylight, the result is a bit of a mixed bag. Here, the Galaxy S9 Plus overexposes our subject a little, although it does capture good detail. The Pixel 2 XL does have a slightly better exposure compared to the Galaxy S9 Plus. The iPhone does manage an overall pleasing image, but the color tone is a lot warmer. The iPhone 10 also has the least edge detection issues in this case, which the Galaxy S9 Plus and the Pixel 2 XL struggle a bit with in this scene. In low light, the Pixel 2 XL offers the best picture since it uses the main camera which has a much wider aperture. The iPhone 10 comes in second, preserving good detail, but the result is a little darker. The Galaxy S9 Plus has the worst image quality here with blotchy details and just not enough brightness. With objects, the Galaxy S9 Plus does the best job with edge detection under good lighting. Details are good and so is the color saturation. The Pixel fares well here too, messing up slightly with Superman's head, but we're not happy with the cool color temperature that the final image offers. The iPhone X has the best exposure, second only to the Galaxy S9 Plus, but fails to detect the correct edges. In low light, the Pixel 2 XL manages to do an excellent job with edge detection as all portions of the mug are in focus. The iPhone X's image is also well lit, but it blurs out the upper portion of the knuckle duster. The Galaxy S9 Plus handles edge detection well, but the image is dull and grainy and doesn't look that good. Clearly, low light portrait shots is the Achilles heel of the Galaxy S9 Plus. In a low light test, we check how the phones handle noise, dynamic range and of course the ability of the sensors to hang on to detail. In our first test, with the sun just about to set over the horizon, the iPhone X manages to capture the best dynamic range but doesn't fare too well with details in the distant objects like the buildings. The photo from the Pixel 2 XL has lower brightness but manages good detail in distant objects at the cost of some noise. The Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus has the cleanest image of the three, and even at 100% crop, there's no visible noise in the buildings in the distance. At night, the iPhone X and the Galaxy S9 Plus manage slightly better dynamic range and brightness. However, once again, the Galaxy S9 Plus delivers the sharpest image here when you zoom in all the way, while the iPhone X comes in at a close second, followed by the Pixel 2 XL. In our first test, the Galaxy S9 Plus doesn't seem to get the colors right for any of the red roses, which is a shame as it does capture good detail. The Pixel 2 XL manages the best color accuracy compared to the other two, as it identifies the reds correctly. Details are also captured nicely. The iPhone X comes in at a close second here for color accuracy, but messes up the exposure a bit. In very low light and without any direct artificial light source illuminating our subject, the Galaxy S9 Plus captures good colors with a pleasing white balance. The iPhone X manages to light up the scene well, but the Pixel edges out the rest by offering slightly better sharpness. Now while we would normally avoid using the flash for photography, it's good to know if your phone has a capable one in the rare instances that you absolutely need it. In a dimly lit room, the Pixel 2 XL manages to light up our subjects pretty evenly including the background. The Galaxy S9 Plus has a powerful flash too, but it does cast a lot of unwanted shadows on our subjects' faces. The iPhone X does manage more natural skin tones, but the intensity and spread isn't as good as others. In pitch darkness, the Galaxy S9 Plus manages the best illumination along with good colors. The Pixel 2 XL follows close behind in terms of intensity and color reproduction. 
The iPhone 10 lights up the scene pretty evenly too, but as you can see, the intensity isn't as strong as the other two. The Pixel 2 XL dominated this test in our last roundup and things haven't really changed too much. During the day, the Pixel 2 XL captures excellent detail in our subject's face and the background. Colors are pleasing, although the image has a slight reddish hue to it. The Galaxy S9 Plus manages good details too, which is a step up from the Galaxy Note 8. Colors are good, although the exposure could have been a bit better. The iPhone X has the smallest field of view, which limits the amount of people you'll be able to cram into a selfie. However, skin tones look more natural and the image has a fairly neutral color tone. The bokeh effect is good across all three phones too, but we feel the iPhone 10 delivers slightly better contrast and colors. The Pixel 2 XL and the Galaxy S9 Plus miss the mark a little here as it doesn't get the edge detection perfectly. In low light, the Pixel 2 XL continues to dominate the other two. Exposure is wonderfully handled, details are spot on and colors are well represented. Galaxy S9 also manages to give you a well-lit selfie and background but ends up overexposing certain areas and the details on a subject's t-shirt is not really visible. The iPhone X captures a slightly noisy image but it still manages to expose the scene properly. In a completely dark room, the screen flash from the Pixel 2 XL does the best job at illuminating our subject's face. The Galaxy S9 Plus has the most powerful screen flash for sure but it doesn't do a very effective job at setting the right exposure. The scene looks a bit washed out and has a very warm color tone. With the iPhone X, selfies are a bit grainy and the screen doesn't light up long enough to properly expose our subject. All three phones support 4K video recording and this year, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus catches up with the Apple iPhone X by also supporting 4K 60fps video. Here, we check for the stabilization and also overall quality of the footage. Color saturation is on the heavier side with the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, which doesn't offer the most natural color tone. There's a noticeable bias towards the greens, which does appear a bit jarring when shooting nature. Dynamic range is good though, and we're happy with the amount of detail in the footage. The Pixel 2 XL doesn't do 4K 60fps, but even at 30fps, color saturation is a bit more toned, and there's good levels of dynamic range. The iPhone X has the most neutral tone of the lot while still delivering good detail and dynamic range. When inside a moving vehicle, like a train, all phones do a good job with stabilization. We found the Galaxy S9 Plus's wind noise reduction to be the most effective here, closely followed by the iPhone X. When shooting handheld, the stabilization in the Galaxy S9 Plus is a definite improvement over the Galaxy S8 Plus and even the Galaxy Note 8 as the jelly effect isn't too noticeable. However, it's still no match for the Pixel 2 XL and the iPhone X in this scenario. In low light, the S9 Plus does a good job with keeping noise in check and smoothing out your movements. However, the exaggerated colors can seem a little jarring at times. The Pixel 2 XL has slightly noisier footage compared to the other two, but stabilization is good. Finally, the iPhone X has the best stabilization among the three while keeping noise and colors in check. For slow motion, the iPhone X and the Galaxy S9 Plus can shoot 1080p video at 240fps, which automatically gives them an edge over the Pixel 2 XL, which is limited to 240fps at only 720p resolution. Plus, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus has a cool trick up its sleeve where it can shoot 960fps super slow motion footage, albeit for very short durations. Samsung certainly seems to have stepped up its game with the Galaxy S9 Plus. It offers big improvements when it comes to video stabilization as compared to its predecessor, the Galaxy S8 Plus. Most landscapes and macros that we shot turned out great with good level of details and sharpness in both day and nighttime. It does struggle a bit with getting the color temperature right at times and portrait shots taken using the live focus mode in low light seldom turn out good. Overall, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus has an excellent set of cameras that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the market and quite often comes out ahead. So that's it for our comparison. Thanks for watching and for all things tech, log on to Gadgets360.com.